Welcome back. Here's Heidi Watney with the report as we get set for the top of the seventh. Heidi. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Cubs to discuss his thoughts on his lineup so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. He said it's one of those games where everything has come together for his hitters, from their approach to their swings to the results. It's all working. One key indicator of that, six extra base hits to this point in the game. Thank you, Heidi. Devin Williams is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Chris Bryant will stand in again as we flash you back here to the fourth inning. This was a two-run home run that was definitely one of the big blows of the ball game to this point. Wheels and deals. Here's the first pitch. Yeah, that looked like an auto take right there, just trying to measure up this pitcher's stuff. The wind up and the 0 1. lifted down the line and left but this is just going to wind up being a foul ball the 0 2 once more Swung on and hit pretty well out to deep left field. And oh, he missed a home run by a matter of feet. It's off the wall. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. Sometimes when a reliever comes in a game, he wants to get that first strike so bad that he serves one up, and that's exactly what happens here. The first battery faces just rockets one off the wall, and now he's got to worry about another base hit potentially bringing home a run. Now the Cubs four hole hitter Ian Happ and it looks like this could be a critical at bat in this one. Well a glance at my scorebook shows they haven't been able to get him out yet. So this could be a fun at bat to watch. And now the first pitch. The high fastball is in there. No one out with a runner at second. Off the plate, one ball, one strike. On the season, Hap hits a little over the 270 mark. Swinging a ball, hit on the ground, but a foul ball. One and two the count now. From the belt, the pitch struck him out. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. Yeah, Matt, that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count. You can really force hitters to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. So now to the plate, Anthony Rizzo. Yes, he'll take a look at ball one. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. And he fouls this one off. He was absolutely all over that fastball. Have to find a way to keep that fair. And they'll go off speed here as this pitch misses. It's two and one. And a fastball, but he's losing it a bit here to three and one now. When you're playing close games like this, base runners mean everything, so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. Pulled toward right center field. Long run for the center fielder. He gets there to put it away, but the runner tags and breaks for third. And he's up to third safely now with two gone in the inning. Jock Peterson will stand in yet again as we flash you back to the middle innings. This was a turning point here. A solo home run that was really one of the key at bats of the ball game to this point. 
from the stretch. And a strike called at the knees. Nothing in one. Well, if you could throw it for a strike consistently, a first pitch changeup is effective. Hitters are almost never looking for it. A ball and a strike now. A 1-1 is laid off for ball two. Three and one to the Cubs left fielder. Not a bad spot to miss right there. Much rather have it run inside than out over the plate where the hitter can do a lot of damage. The three and one pitch. Probably better that he let that pitch go anyway. After seeing a lively fastball on the pitch before, it's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. Here comes the payoff pitch. And he comes back with a fastball. Strike three called, and the inning is over. Cubs strand one. They're still up seven to five. Andrew Chafin gets the call from the pen to take the ball for the home seventh. Bottom of the inning now, and that'll bring up Rowdy Tellez. The first baseman, number 44. From the stretch. And here's a slider that's nowhere close, and it's 1 and 0. Popped up. Bryant trying to get there, and this is going to wind up a foul ball. One and one, here it comes. Bat explodes as this has popped up, and he'll steer clear of the flying debris to make the catch here for the first out. And now here is Rafael Marchand. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. First pitch of the A.B. now. Oh, had him chopping at that one. It's nothing in one. Swing and a miss on a nasty slider right there. Always felt toughest pitch in the game. If you're a guy who liked to work the big part of the field, you were on that fastball middle away. Now that slider looked like a heater for about 56 feet, 6 inches. Now batting, the pitcher. Stepping in now, Devin Williams, as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. He's newly entered into the ball game, so this will be his first trip to the plate here in inning number seven. Now the 1 0. And this is pop foul, but perhaps playable behind first. There to take it is Rizzo, and there are two away now. The batter, number nine. At the plate now is Willie Castro. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. And now the first pitch. One and one. Hit on the ground out to short, and that's through for a hit. He looked a little bit out in front right there, but he's able to pull that ground ball through the hole for a single. Robert Stock takes over pitching duties, looking to get that final out now here in this seventh inning. Now into the box is Joaquin Dias. And with men on base and two away, it feels like this at bat could go a long way toward deciding this thing. No doubt, Matt. A base hit here changes this game quite a bit. But if they can't score here, it looks pretty bleak for them heading into the last couple of innings. The 
becomes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. No balls in one strike. Oh one. Here's the pitch. Didn't quite catch the zone there. Ball one. Marshawn at second. Castro at first. Two out in the inning. One and two now. A swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes, and that will retire the side. Clearly fired up to work out of that jam. More from Citizens Bank Park in just a moment. Ready to begin the eighth, and that'll bring in the first year catcher, Michael catcher, Papierski. Michael Papierski. Here it comes. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Just behind the fastball there, two strikes now. As we near the end of this one, it's clear the long ball has played a big role in today's outcome. Dan Dero, what are your final thoughts on what we've seen? Yeah, just non-competitive pitches in some big situations, Dan, and the offense took full advantage. Yeah, you know, Dero, one of the things about pitching is you want to have location, and it was obvious in this one today that the pitchers weren't on point, and what happens when that happens? Hitters make you pay, and the long ball was a big part of this one here. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Ready now is Jose Iglesias. He's one for two in this one. First pitch on the way. Down the left field line and deep. And it's a foul ball. Bases are empty. One man out. Sent on the ground out to second. And that'll find its way into right field for a one out single. And if the Cubs are thinking about turning to their bench here, there you get a look at what's available for them. David Bodie will be summoned off the bench here as he'll pinch hit with the runner at first and one gone in the inning. From the belt, kicks and deals, and it's fouled away. He'll start this one at 274, three homers and 15 RBIs. High and deep down the left field line, and foul. Runner at first here, one man out. Can't get him to chase, it's one and two. Oh, and he can't catch up to the fastball as he swings and misses for the second out. Well, his struggles continue. It's been a rough go of it at the plate with him, and watching this at bat, it's clear to me that his rhythm and timing, they're just all off. Even as a pitcher like I was, you can tell these things and exploit them. At the plate now, Nico Horner as the changeup to him drops in there for the first strike. Struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. Fouled off. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. In the dirt here. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to 1 and 2. Has a look. Now the pitch. Now a swing and he gets him to pop it up and no one can get there. It's a foul ball. The one two pitch and he takes a strike three called on the screwball and that's how the inning will end. One left for the Cubs. They lead it seven to five. Brandon Workman will come on in relief now as he'll make his 10th appearance of the season. Bob 
bottom of inning number eight set to go. And standing in is the veteran third baseman, Javier third baseman. Baez. Javier. Baez. Outfield in the no doubles defense. Now the first pitch fouled away. Good pitch there. Had him a little out in front. Tying run stands on deck, but it'll only matter if the guy in the box can get on base. Yeah, and that has to be his mentality at the plate right now, Matt. He can't be the hero, so he needs to do what he can to give the guy behind him a chance to be the guy. So it was a strikeout swinging. Javier Baez sent packing to begin the bottom of the inning. So here's the cleanup hitter, Bryce Harper. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. Close there, but he doesn't get the call with the breaking ball. Right guy, right spot. This is one of the better hitters in their lineup. Just the guy they want to see coming up now to get this inning going. And he fouls this one off. The 1-1. One -one is in there for the second strike. And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. Now the pitch. Here's one that misses inside, and the counts run full now, three and two. Don't go too far. The dangerous Giancarlo Stanton gets his shot next. One out, nobody on. And he loses him on a breaking ball. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Giancarlo Stanton now. He's working on a one for three thus far. First pitch of the A.B. now. On couldn't lay off the pitch inside. It's 0 and 1. These are the moments that don't always show up on the highlight film right here. Big spot. They have a chance right here. This guy mixes in a knock. They have a chance to get right back in this game. If not, if he grounds into a double play, it's pretty much over. Here's the 0 and 2. I mean, he's coming right after him, Matty. Three fastballs in a row. Swing and a miss. Looked like the knuckle curve there, and that's out number two. Well, this pitching staff has done a pretty good job right there. That's the fourth time he struck out, and we're only in the second game of this series. And that'll bring in the switch hitting Francisco Lindor. Popped him up. Rizzo into foul territory. And no one will get this one. It could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. Shoots this one over to first. A dive and he knocks it down. And they will still manage to get him at first. A spectacular all-around play, and the inning is over. Here's Jason Hayward now. And to start out the inning, it looks like they've decided to stick with the same reliever out there, Dan. They have, Matt. I think the way he pitched the last inning kind of inspired that. But it's not uncommon for relief pitchers to have troubles after they sit and watch their guys swing the bat a bit. We'll see if he stays as sharp as he was before. Diego Castillo enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Here's the first pitch to him. 
Off we go in the ninth as the first pitch misses for ball one. The 1 0 is looked at for the first strike. The 1 1 is in there for strike number two. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Into the windup and the pitch. Swing and a liner. But this will be speared at third, and that was self defense all the way. One gone. The third baseman. Next to hit is Chris Bryant. He's two for three with a home run and a double. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Now a good pitch around the knees but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Dias is there now and he has it two gone. So now it'll be the four hole hitter Ian Happ. It's been a nice game for him three hits including a homer to this point. First pitch fastball swung on and missed 0 and 1. Big fastball is definitely this guy's M.O. coming out of the bullpen. Hit softly on the ground to first. And he'll step on the bag himself and the inning is over. Cubs are down in order. They're still up 7 to 5. Rowan Wick takes the ball now in inning number nine, looking to close the door. Number 50. All set for the bottom of the ninth. And next, the dangerous power threat, Rowdy Tellens. Number 44. First pitch on the way. And a fastball is in there for strike one. That's the exact spot to lean on as a reliever. As a hitter, you just have to tip your cap and look for the next one. And it's fouled away. Now the 0-2 pitch. One ball, two two ball, two Man, this at bat has changed quickly from 0-2 now to 2-2. A good job of plate discipline by this hitter, not chasing those pitches just off the plate. Three and two now. Hey, leading off an inning in this situation, three balls on you. You have to know that a solo shot's not tying this game up. You have to find a way to get on base any way possible. And that is the start they were looking for down by two as that misses for ball four. That's an excellent at bat right there. Fell behind early one and two. Didn't panic or start chasing pitches out of the zone. He's able to lay off three pitches in a row and he's standing on first with no outs. That's a great job. Digging in will be Rafael Marchand. He represents the potential tying run if he can launch one or find a way around the bases. Yeah, Matt, I kind of doubt he's thinking about going yard, even though that would be the best result they could hope for. He's not a long ball threat, and he knows it, so he could just be looking for some way to keep that line moving. Here's the first pitch to him. Starts him with a breaking ball this time. Misses down and in for a ball. 1-0. and Perfect time for a mound visit right here. Just give him a breather, a chance to collect himself and get back to work. The 1-0. -oh. 
right side but it's well foul. A ball and two strikes now. I always remember John Smoltz telling me the greatest asset a closer can have is short term memory and this situation calls for it right here. He's got to forget that he has any traffic on a base pass and just attack the zone. That's popped up. Coming in is Peterson. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first out. Alec Bohm will be called upon here to hit with the game on the line. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Enters play here at 279. No home runs as of yet, and five driven in. Here comes the 0 1. Wanted to get the front door curveball on the inside corner there, but it backed up a little and stayed off the corner. Tellez leads off first with one away. Now a hot shot here that will be caught behind the runner at first. And he'll then put the tag on the runner, and this is a double play. 7-5 tonight's final. Chicago took the lead in the fourth and held on until the end. Dan Winkler earns his sixth winning decision in this one. Rowan Wick closes the door for the save, his 12th of the season. So that's a wrap here tonight. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and Heidi Watney, this is Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, find us on Twitter, at MLB The Show. You would think I'm in the six, six. Yeah. Born Jan 26, 36, but I never the brick. Here now is the.